today we're going to be reviewing this outboard motor by Hankai. This is supposed to be rated for five horsepower and I got this from Amazon for less than $300. So this is what my local park rents out to the public. This is a Newport 55 pound trolling motor and this is just a 12 volt AGM battery. So you can see this one's over a year old and they typically rent out the battery and the motor for $42, which I thought was insane considering this typically only lasts about an hour of use. This is pretty much all it's got. It's averaging between three and four miles an hour. You're going way too fast. Can you slow down? <laughs> slow down. This is pretty much as much weight as I'm gonna get. What's that, Bailey? You want me to buy a faster, faster motor? Whatever floats your boat. So I took that little comment from my wife as approval for me to buy an electric motor for us, and that is exactly what I did. Let's go check out what's in this box. So here's everything that came in that big package. I was actually expecting to see a little bit more, like tools or spare hardware, but I guess we don't need anything since it pretty much came pre-assembled, which is certainly not a bad thing. Came with a user manual, and this is a pigtail harness for you to connect to some battery terminals. So these are Anderson style connectors. So it's just a quick release. And then these two ring terminals are gonna connect to a positive and negative terminal for a, either a 48 volt battery, or it's supposed to wire up to four 12 volt batteries wired into a series to make 48 volts but unfortunately we don't have either of those setups we're actually going to be hooking this up to a 52 volt lithium ion battery from one of my electric bikes as some of you guys may know if you're subscribed to this channel i kind of have a thing for electric bikes and i have a number of lithium ion batteries in the garage but most of my stuff run on 72 volts and only this bike has a 52 volt setup which is the closest to this 48 volt which is gonna run it at a slight overvolt and potentially make a little bit more power and higher RPMs. Let's go see what's going on inside under the cover. Huh. This brushless controller looks very similar to the Vever MY1020 brushless controllers that I use on like my Razer electric dirt bike projects. Maybe this is something I can upgrade in the future. So yellow, blue, and green. There are three face wires down here. So this is a brushless motor. It's good to know, but before I do any modifications, I wanna see if it functions as it comes. So this motor claims to make 1200 watts, but the back says five for five horsepower, which kind of doesn't make sense to me because 1200 watts is not even two horsepower. And then the controller is rated for a current of 25 amps. And the battery that we're pulling out of this Angway bike is supposed to put out something like 30 to 33 amps. So this is gonna be a perfect match. It's just gonna be slightly over volted. Let me see what's going on here. And then for the control, it's using a twist throttle with forward and reverse. So this is definitely something I cannot get from any cheap outboard motor. So this is gonna be a nice change from our last two stroke motor. And it came with a pair of keys. So where did these go? Oh, so there is an ignition switch at the very front of the motor. And then this looks like a voltage display. We'll find out when we hook everything up. So hopefully we can get at least eight miles an hour out of this, pushing a 12 foot John boat. Well, I'm hoping it does because the manual is claiming 17 kilometers an hour, which is a little more than 10 miles an hour. But let's go wire this thing up and see if it even works. So here's the battery that we're gonna be borrowing from this bike. It is a 16 amp hour, 52 volt. Uh, as you can see, this is the terminal with the positive and negative terminals. And it looks nothing like something that you can hook up to this pigtail harness. So I'm gonna take one of my spare Anderson cable pigtail harnesses, and I'm gonna make an adapter that hooks it up to the matching connector from the bike. So let's go pull that matching connector from the inside of the frame. And here's what that adapter looks like. So this side is just gonna slide on top of this battery 
and then this side is going to clip into the Anderson connector that's on the motor. Then I'm going to finally wrap this in some electrical tape just for added security. Start by plugging in the battery. So far, so good. Key on. I totally forgot that I have a second ignition on the battery. So let's turn that on. So the volt gauge on top of the motor shows 58.1 volts, which sounds about right for a 52 volt battery. So let's see what happens. So forward works, reverse works. So just a quick overview, key on on the battery side, key on on the motor side, switch to the B position. It's gonna build up some voltage. It's gonna show 58 volts. Have this in forward. We should be good to start some testing. Here's how the outboard mounts onto the back of the John boat. This is actually the same exact mount that their two stroke motor uses. You just twist these clamps and it presses against the back of the boat and it's very secure. What I found interesting and convenient about this outboard is it actually comes with a cruise control feature. To activate this, you just twist it to the speed that you desire and then you hold it for two seconds and let go and then it maintains the speed for you. I just wish that the stem was a little tighter so it can keep its direction, but I can probably make some adjustments so it'll do that. been running it for a few minutes and we're down to 55.6 volts. This is how it works. That is a decent amount of wake. This is not even close to being the same thing as the trolling motor. And this thing has a cruise control feature. I think you just pull this, and you let go. That sets cruise control. How is this, Bailey? Much better. Much better? <laughs> this is so much faster than that rental trolling motor, by a long shot. see if either of us can catch anything tonight. Oh, she caught a huge one. Whoa. What is that? A six pounder? All right, since I'm not catching anything, we are changing spots. This was worth every single penny, for sure. One thing I can't figure out is what this A setting does, because it doesn't turn the motor on. It actually doesn't get any sort of power until I put it in the B setting. So please comment below if you happen to know what this A setting does. 
And then I just have the lithium battery sitting on the back of the boat, kind of mocked up with some little bit of Gorilla Tape just to keep it in place. It's not going anywhere. I always recommend to keep it secure. You do not want the shifting around and having any connections coming loose. Definitely don't want a 48 volt battery terminal getting in the water that could potentially be dangerous. So always keep the battery secure. All right, we are almost three miles into this experiment and we are still holding a constant speed of five to six miles an hour. I'm pretty impressed that this thing could still push this 12 foot John boat to five miles an hour with this little bit of voltage left. But obviously I would prefer to have a much larger battery just so we can have a longer runtime. So this Hankai outboard motor survived its first day of testing. Luckily no damage. I hit a stump earlier, so I was concerned we may have done damage to the prop, but no signs of any damage. I think I hit it over here. As far as range, we were able to get a little over three miles with one charge. Obviously I was just using this small 16 amp hour battery for testing purposes. And to get an idea of how much power it uses per battery size, preferably I would like to use at least like a 48 volt, 40 amp hour, maybe even 80 amp hour battery, but they're quite expensive. Another thing to consider is I was pretty much flooring it at full speed the whole time that I was testing just because I wanted to really see how fast this thing goes. But if you're just putting around in a small lake or using this as a trolling motor for half the time, you'll probably get away with just using a 20 amp hour battery. If you're interested in getting more information on this Hankai 48 volt outboard motor, I will have a link to it in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects, testing outboards, electric bikes, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.